helps. We're not here to replace. Mm -hmm. We're here to enhance and give better perspective, better data. All right, welcome back to the Pure Playbook. I'm Dr. Dustin Boston here with the athletic trainer herself, Erin Rajiri. Super excited for just another episode as we continue consistency here. A lot of good feedback. Uh, all about bringing excellent healthcare resources to student athletes and their parents on where the hell do we go? Who the hell do we trust? That's what it's all about. Uh, we've got a lot of things that we have launched in the past week. We've added another doc. You guys met Dr. Nate last week. And we have already had our performance rehabilitation side mm -hmm. uh, starting to take off. We have more interest in our app, which is super cool. We've met with a softball coach. I've met with uh, some insider on uh, some of the hockey scene in the area in St. Louis. So super excited. Make sure you follow us on social medias, um, YouTube, like the podcast, give us some feedback. We'll check those comments and notes and let us know. Maybe there's a topic you want us to go over or our thoughts on anything. Pretty much an open open book. Yeah. So we're coming up with a lot of good content and things you want to talk about. But uh uh, make sure you follow us for the journey here at the Pure Athlete through the Pure Playbook podcast. Where are we going today? What do you want to talk about? Well, last night, something really important happened. Yeah, yeah, huh. Do you know what it is? I do, but I'm going to let you share <laughs> it. I do. Okay, so Jason Tatum's team um, won the whole, the whole shebang. That would be the NBA Finals. The whole shebang is what it's called. <laughs> the whole shebang. <laughs> the whole shebang, um, which is really cool because he's from our area. He's yep. from St. Louis. I think he went to Chaminade. Yeah, that's what I was looking up. I'm going to yep. look it up. Yep, I think he went to Chaminade. Him and also in this news, mm -hmm. uh, as the NHL is going through the Stanley Cup playoffs, Matthew Kachuk, I believe also a Chaminade. There's a picture that yep. they were circulating during the, uh, during the finals where they were talking about Jason Tatum and the fact that obviously Matthew Kachuk's in the Stanley Cup finals, right. but there was a picture circulating of them on a school bus together so hanging funny. out taking pictures and stuff when they were young yeah. like babies so that was super cool but yeah yeah my uh well i saw jason tatum play whenever i was in high school mm -hmm. and that's like one of my like sc school's favorite memories is getting dunked on by <laughs> chaining like by him so you almost said chaining tatum. i almost did <laughs> listen here dance tatum. life um there was also uh so funny enough jamal tatum which i don't think there i don't know if there's any connection there but i'm pretty sure his name was jamal tatum he was who um he ended up going d1 somewhere but um he was also another st louis area it was kind of the same story though it's like we knew jamal tatum when i was in high school yeah and it was one of those same things like our whole goal was not to get dunked on by <laughs> yeah. jamal tatum so but yeah so jason tatum is a nba champion mm -hmm. um was that his first one i know they went and they lost i think it i think it was his first one i don't know if that's his second or his first i think it might have been his first one yeah at any rate though yeah it's a super exciting time not only for the sports world but for the area of st louis yeah and i think it's really cool that he like wants to do so much with st louis i mean mm -hmm. it's important to not forget where you came from and to play for something bigger than just the trophy or yourself yeah. Um, so I really enjoy his mission on that. I actually had the opportunity to meet Jason Tatum as, oh? we, as we both very much um, right faded our drives. He was on, uh, he, we were playing at Old Hickory Country Club, which is um, a country club that we're a part of that he used to have his Jason Tatum Foundation golf tournament at. Gotcha. So he brings a lot of that stuff back home, which yeah. is cool and had a lot of big name guys out there. But um, he was just playing practice round or whatever. He was just out playing. He was in town. And um, he was coming up uh, number seven. And it's a long par five. And mm -hmm. I was going up nine, which is a decent par four as you head to the clubhouse. But it kind of shares a, a – can share a cart path. Yeah. Well, he took his drive to the right. I took my drive also to the right because we're coming at each other. And literally our balls were three foot apart. And <laughs> he stands over his ball. And I was like, hey, hang on a second. 
I think this one's yours. And I talked to him for a few minutes, kind of backed up the course a little bit, but super awesome guy. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, man. I was like, hey, congratulations on a great year. Didn't really talk much basketball. I'm like, how often do you golf? But just super down to earth, yeah. not very pretentious. Um, so kudos to you, Jason Tatum, for being for being real. And I don't think any of that has changed. But yeah. it was super cool to to have a run-in with, with him a couple of years ago. Well, my run-in was watching him dunk on our team. <laughs> 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 so mine's better. <laughs> Just kidding. Mm -hmm. It's so nice to see, um, you know, again, as we talk about the three pillars yeah. of, uh, you know, the, the peer playbook and the peer athlete here at the office is, you know, physical, mental and relationships and really embodying the relationship style. You know, he could have those golf tournaments anywhere. He mm -hmm. could, you know, I don't know, it, you know, how much he actually stays in Boston, but he definitely could. Right. He's a staple there. Um, no different than, you know, Pierce when he was there and Walton when he was there who passed away recently. But he's definitely a staple in Boston and a Hall of Famer, probably ballot at some point. But he still brings it back yeah. home and does a lot of things in the area. So relationally, it's very important. And I hope a lot of the, the kids and student athletes we see and the parents that we see really instill the fact that, yeah, that don't forget where you came from. Right. And, um, you know, another guy who is as uh, the MLB All-Star Games coming up, Christian Yelich mm -hmm. is somebody who I was around a lot and coached his little brother and spent some time with Christian, too, as they were coming up through Westlake High School. And, um, you know, his mom dropped a, a, a post on Facebook the other day and um, I liked it. And sometimes, you know, I'll still hear from Alicia or I'll just send her a message, his mom, and say, hey, he's doing awesome. Yeah. It's good to see him. I mean, he's a big deal, but I mean, just to – to have the relationships where those parents and those athletes are still very real and, mm -hmm. the, and they don't forget people because a lot of them have, a lot of them do, you know, out of sight, out of mind, but also I'm here and you're there. And so it's very cool to just keep in mind and, and see some of these athletes because I think some of them are being forced to make sure they do that. Yeah. But I also think, I mean, you know, we talk about the Kelsey's a lot, obviously it's a been a big thing over the past couple of years, but also local to us. Um, a lot of the racing world is like that, but you're starting to see more of these athletes, which is very refreshing, bring stuff back home and, mm -hmm. you know, relate things to back home and talk about back home and do foundational stuff back home. And uh, it's nice to also hear the city buzz a little bit about, yeah. you know, and, and so appreciative as, you know, some of the high schools, because once you get to that point, you know, I don't think there's a lot of combativeness of CBC versus Chaminade yeah. versus Howell versus Wentzville versus, you know, the South County schools, you know, at Summit and Parkway. It's like all of a sudden they all come together and it's like he won it. Right. Like, that's cool. Right. Yeah. And I think it just one of the things I love about athletics in general, not even just like high level, even high school, is that like you are playing or competing for something that isn't your own name on your jersey. Like yeah. you have a school on your on your chest, you have a school on your back and like there's people who will come after you and there's people who have come before you. Mm -hmm. And that's something I've always just enjoyed about sports is like the tradition and the legacy that mm -hmm. is built. And it, it you feel so much better about your tell yourself and your team that like you are competing for something that isn't you. Like right. it's not on you to like it is on you to create the legacy. And I just think that's so cool. I've yeah. always thought that. There's a, there's a song and it's kind of a... Is it Woo Woo Jason Tim? <laughs> <laughs> it I is now. Wait, I was waiting. <laughs> no, this is this is oh, definitely a different genre as far as this, but more on the meaningful, deep, psychological, heartfelt side. Awesome song though, pretty upbeat, but I think it's a Rascal Flat song and it's how, how they remember you. Mm -hmm. And so you saying it's like, you know, you're playing for more than yourself and then it gets to the point to where you're still playing from a come from, where, yeah. you know, you're, he's playing not only for Boston not only Chaminade, but now he's playing for St. Louis. Yeah. And, and, you know, you saying there's going to be people before you and there's definitely going to be people after mm -hmm. you. And so how they remember you specifically is a choice that you have yeah. and that perception that you can build and how they remember you and, and leaving that, that legacy, no mm -hmm. matter what it is, you know, if you're a student athlete that, you know, you want to be known as not only the student athlete, but he was also a great student. Yeah. And, you know, if they bring you back to talk, you have that rapport, you have that connection, you have that ability to impact not only the students, mm -hmm. but like we're trying to do also the parents. So yeah. they get the big idea and that, you know, they see what's happening. It's like, you know, even as parents, we can all take a kick to the gut every once in a while and be like, yeah, I should probably make sure they do more of that. Right. They do more of the 
you know, the volunteering, if they're cleaning up the field and it's optional, go. Mm-hmm. Or if somebody else, you know, maybe there's another program, another school, and you have friends that go to another school, go help them clean up their yeah. their fields or whatever it might be. But, you know, if you win something, you know, some of our, our soccer players were just at the Super Copa, mm-hmm. um, way out of town, Dallas, Pensacola, somewhere kind of more south. And, it's you know, they did very well. But coming back and those teams showing appreciation to people who funded money mm-hmm. or who showed up to all the games and bought the snacks and, you know, just came to support and coming back and celebrating with them versus just being like, yeah, we won. Great. Yeah. Um, look at us. Season starts in three and a half days right. all over no, again. Literally. literally. <laughs> so, but to, to, to see that and have more people doing that is, is super cool. And I think very, very important. Yeah. Sure. And that's something that you have to instill as a coach. Like that is the culture. Mm-hmm. That is the base of culture is, why yeah <laughs> what's your why why the your why can't always be a personal reason it can't be well I want to make it to the NBA or I want to PR on this mile time like it has to be for something greater or at some point you're going to hit all those goals and you're going to have nothing to work for anymore mm-hmm. and so when you're like fueled by the like wanting to build better for people who are going to come after you Mm -hmm. that is whenever you not only grow as an athlete but you're growing as a person Mm because that's not just a skill that happens in at like in athlete life right (laughs) it happens post athlete life too it's on the tv right behind us there you go (laughs) pure excitement (laughs) yeah it's super cool we always play this stuff in the office and and seeing these things go down it's uh it's, it's cool to see. I, I love that excitement. I mean, I think that's the one thing that everybody should know and these kids should know that, you know, as we talk about life after sport mm-hmm. too, it's it's like the camaraderie, you, you can miss that. Yeah. It will disappear yeah. if you let it. And that's why even doing some of these things, and I think you bring up a great, great point as far as the coaching or even like the, the closer parent circle, mm-hmm. the, the team moms the influential, and influential, yeah. That um, making sure, I mean, I would highly suggest just off the top thinking of this is like when you have a tournament, when you um, win a championship of sorts or whatever it might be, you win mm-hmm. state cup, you win um, even a, just a bigger tournament. That's not so much the championship of the league or yeah. whatever, but when you have those milestones, making sure you get those kids together to celebrate it together, but celebrate with the, the com- at least the immediate community yeah. around them and, you know, sending the, the thank you notes of, Hey, we couldn't have gone to Dallas without you, you know, right. thank you. Here's a picture from, you know, and, and, but making the kids do that, not making the team moms and teen dads, right. having those team moms, teen dads and coaches really make them do the extra stuff mm-hmm. because what you don't see, whether it's even just, you know, college ball at whatever level, you know, NAIA all the way up to D one, it's like those things will be required And a lot of the culture around like, man, I've got class and I've got to go do this for the team. And it's kind of stupid. I don't know what has to do with practice or whatever. Like they're required to do those things down Mm -hmm. the road. And it's like if you start instilling it and making it fun now, they're not going to know any different. Much like we talk with the physical and the health side of athletics, much like we talk with, with the mental side of the athletics or the relationships. But I think some teams have that in mind. And it's really easy to get backed up and be like, oh, damn, we should have done that. Right. But just making that a part of the culture and like here's what we do we practice we play we win we learn and then we also do this Mm -hmm. and if you guys are on board with that this is going to be a great team for you if you're not at all on board with that you might want to find somewhere else to go because we're going to start to build this differently um and it's cool to see these athletes like jason tatum (laughs) tossing his kid in the air and celebrating and but also sharing that with home yeah and i think like a big thing that you can instill is from like the coaching side to make this happen is involving your alumni, involving the people who yes. have been there before. Um, because there's there's nothing better as an athlete than being able to relate to someone who has done everything you are doing. Mm-hmm. It's so easy for a coach to be like, I understand, I understand. But there comes a point where your athlete's going to think in their head, but you don't. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so bringing those people in and making it a warm, welcoming environment for alumni too, because on the flip side of the coin, if you're an alumni, like it's hard af- to be post-athlete. Yeah. And so sometimes like being involved in that, even just for a little bit, being able to be welcomed at practice or talk to the athletes there like that's going to help their transition also mm-hmm. and it's also going to help your athletes kind of have a mentor right and also have a like you said a bigger picture of why am I doing this yeah. like I want to be brought back to to teach you know kids that are 15 years younger than me and right. remember where I was and be a little reminiscent but it gives them something else to shoot for that mm-hmm. is bigger than themselves because now they're talking you know you get them thinking of 
wow, he was here 20 years ago. Like I'd go back to Cuba high school in a heartbeat. Yeah. You know, we, the team that I was a part of, you know, we were blessed to be that team that was from first grade on yeah. and we ended up winning, you know, state and, and to be able to come back. And if they asked me to come back, I mean, that would be badass to even right. get, not just myself, you know, I immediately think to get that team back together, that was all from down home, mm -hmm. small town, Cuba, Missouri, and come have an impact where we can talk because then it also can provide the alumni an opportunity that can, that can not only help the coaching staff because you get in this tunnel mm -hmm. of, here's what we didn't do great. Yeah. And here's what we wish we did have. And we didn't have all the resources back then um, or the personnel that they have now. Mm -hmm. I mean, now you have defensive coaches for defensive coaches. Right. So you don't just have, you know, in baseball, you don't just have, you know, there's assistant coach, there's head coach, and there might be a, you know, an aux auxiliary coach. Yeah. Now there's a catching coach. Now there's a base running coach. And mm -hmm. now there's middle infield coach. There's outfielder coaches. There's hitting coach. There's, bunt, uh, it's, uh, there's so much that goes on there. Um, that here's what we wish we had. Here's definitely what we didn't get, do good. And vulnerably, transparently, here's what I should have been better at as a person, right. as an athlete, as a student. But involving alumni, I think, is a great, great point because you also never know in a lot of these schools now, um, you never know, like a Jason Tatum, it's like still not every day. I don't care how big the high school um, Christian Yelich, as I talked about earlier, went to Westlake High School, Westlake Christian Oaks. I mean, those are big Southern California yeah. schools. They have a lot of they have a lot of athletes. But for those of you that maybe have smaller demographics or in an area where we talk about St. Louis being a hot pit for mm -hmm. a lot of talent yeah. that needs to excel in a different area to be seen. Um, you know, there's plenty of people that still get drafted out of the St. Louis area. But even in this immediate area, I don't care if you're in Oklahoma City or, you know, some of these smaller bigger cities include the alumni because mm -hmm. bringing somebody back like a Tatum, it's like, Oh wow. Like yeah. he's here. And I think they'd be more than willing to do it. But just from a program standpoint, don't sleep on that and don't not make the ask because mm -hmm. it's like, Oh, he's a champion. Now I don't even think I'm going to get him. It'll probably cost a fortune. Yeah. How do you know that? Some of the connections that we've made just in the past few weeks, some of the professional um, blues players, yeah. uh, some of the, the guys that I played with. And then we, we've had Brett Graves here, who's an MLB mm -hmm. all-star who's from this area. And make Pierre, the, so uh, many. Pierre. And it's like, make the ask no matter where you're at and mm -hmm. bring those people back because it doesn't matter how big they get. Chances are there's a, a, a fraction of them at least that's still bigger than themselves and yeah. are willing to give back and pour in and be a resource and something that also from our perspective now should take the advice mm -hmm. and filter it still, you yeah. know, what he's doing in the NBA might not cross over, but there's still going to be a lot of good information if for nothing else, be relational with people and, and honor where they've come from and what they're displaying for an area. The kids in this area are still looking up to people like that, bring them in and let them be real. Yeah, because on the, on the flip side of that, too, like, if I'm a professional athlete and, like, there's a part of me where the biggest honor would be to go back to where you came from. Mm -hmm. And even, like, not a professional and by any means, but, like, it is such a, an honor when, like, my high school or my studio that I'm going to start teaching at again, like, mm -hmm. ask you to come back mm -hmm. because you're like, oh, wow, like, full circle. Yeah. And it is just so cool for the kids, too. Um so yeah, now you know, that we're in the summer, everyone's home. Invite your alumni back. Yeah, and 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 kind of a little hack for you programs too that have these younger student athletes is it's like, it's like free training. Yeah. It's free training. It's yeah. it's a free look into you know the bigger, better things mm -hmm. and and what's to come. And it doesn't always have to be from bad. Like oh, tell us the tell us the nitty right. gritty. It's like right. no, no, that don't matter. If yeah. you get there, you get to learn that. We'll help you navigate that sooner. Even here, some of the kids that were student athletes that we're mentoring, it's like we're not here to scare you. It's like oh, but you don't know the underlying. Right. It's not about that. But a lot of these programs can get some free input and be like oh man, he came with some good ideas mm -hmm. and just taking what they say can literally advance the program, but yeah. also build value for a program, draw more other athletes. It's like, oh, they had Jason Tatum, wish I was there. Well, maybe we should play for them because if you do it again and bring them back, like there's so much value build, but also education that you can then use to accelerate your program to oh, yeah. a greater height. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we just had, from like my personal standpoint, we just had Addie, Sh Addie Shallow yeah. come back. She, go, uh, she went to Francis Howell. She was on dance team there. And then now she goes to Utah Valley University, which in the dance world yeah. is royalty. <laughs> yeah. um, so even her just coming back for a few days that she mm -hmm. was home, I mean, she never gets to come home. She goes yeah. to school in Utah. And so for her being home for a month and spending a whole week with us, like 
yeah on both flips of the coin like she was so happy to do it and we were like overjoyed that she would spend her she was time at our house us. like two or three days yeah. right as soon as she got back and yeah. it's like a little bit of normalcy for uh-huh. him too you know and she was grateful to do that and yeah i mean it's people like that that mm-hmm. uh those are your idols and your icons mm-hmm. not necessarily the ones big in the news like if you see somebody singled out big in the news really be conscious conscious of why they're on the news Mm -hmm. just because they're getting all you know they they say you know any publicity is good publicity Mm. yeah it is for numbers and you know i wouldn't even say ratings but for numbers but it's you know really pick and choose because a lot of the guys that you don't see on the news all the time Mm -hmm. um that are doing big things and a part of teams like this you know jason tatum's a big talked about person in the sports world However, you don't see him being singled out like a LeBron. Right. And, you know, there's all kinds of different, you know, hardcore LeBron fans, fall off LeBron fans because of what he speaks about and how he's acting and what he does. Um, You know, but be very cautious, but also look at those people who um, are a little more under the radar, too, but doing big things. So just because they're not mainstream, you don't have to go after a, a, a LeBron or you know, whomever it is, I don't even watch much baseball anymore, but, you know, even Christian Yelich is like ML MVP, um, just doing big, big things, potentially a hall of fame ballot as well, mm-hmm. but he's not singled out. You never hear him in the media. You never hear him in, in, in the news so much on a decline or from a bad perspective. And so I think there's uh, a lot of people that are missed out on for good information yeah. and good culture, um, to bring back that are potentially from your area. Yeah, absolutely. I think, the summer is the most like easiest time to be able to kind of start that culture by doing all the things we're talking about because your athletes usually are home right now. Mm-hmm. And if, if they are home, it's for a short time. So don't wait until something goes wrong in your program or you feel like, oh, my team really needs to pick me up to do that. Like start it now so that the culture is just building as you go throughout the season. We should do like film days of like media – like post game media yeah, and do film and like kind of break it down and, and get some feedback from, okay, what do you see here? And what did you like about that answer? What Mm -hmm. did you dislike about that answer? What do you know about this guy? How often is he up here answering these questions and just kind of start to look at and and prep them for that? Because Mm -hmm. while they might be in the media room post game after the finals or, you know, weekly after games or whatever, um, that's a very real scenario that just seems so magnified, but, Strip the NBA title, Mm -hmm. strip the association they're playing for, strip whatever the accolades are or the game that they're talking about. And now you can very quickly relate that to, um, so you saw 56 clients today. What all did you see? Mm -hmm. Or, hey, we, you're responsible for this HR team. Um, give me the rundown of how the week went. What do you see? What can we make better? What, what's your feedback? What's the news in the room? And be, it's very relatable across real everyday, more real world right. application. And so, but if these kids are watching this stuff, it's like, why not go over that with them? Not just game film. Yeah. Um, so relationally, and who knows, maybe that's something we can look into and in, in going over some of that and how to speak, how to talk, how to, um, create energy, how to shift energy as far as do you want to be empowering? Do you want to be uplifting or the harder conversations? How do you stay even keel with energy through that? Um, I think those are all very good things to, to note and I'll have to go back. I didn't end up watching the end of the game, but it'd be interesting to see and hear how Tatum was during the the post game interviews and things like that, because I could imagine he was, just experiencing him a little bit. He's pretty even keel, pretty low key, but everybody has that excitement. But I, I don't think you're going to see this real way over the top kind of uh, personality. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, it's I'm going to go back and, and watch because I think a lot of people, at least in this area, are as yeah. well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. In other news, let's see. This past weekend, we had our open house. We did, yes. Um, where we kind of unveiled our performance lab mm-hmm. um, and our Pure Athlete app. Mm-hmm. So any thing you want to know about that, just you know, slide up, contact yeah. us. Yeah, we're definitely changing the game when it comes to those kinds of resources. Mm-hmm. And we want all of you to know that. Be, and, and we've gotten multiple times, we've gotten feedback like, you need to get this going faster. Yeah. Like you've got something here and as we're releasing more and more um you know i I, we've i think we've said it before but 
where literally the the perform the performance rehab side of things is 100% included in the app as well. Um, the care that we provide here um, on site that we're considering branching out into mm-hmm. other locations with, um, it's not just your stock standard injury care or things like that. It's whole ass care from lifestyle to yes, if there's injuries involved, but lifestyle, injury prevention, lifestyle, you know, curating a lifestyle of what it means to be a student athlete, especially in today's demand. Yeah. Um, and what that looks like for life after sport and why this all matters now and why it's important for student athletes and their parents to get them in on some of this. The services we provide are not a reactive service. We have a lot of kids coming in now Um, I just just a few this morning that are taking action in this with our peer athlete evaluation and that gets all uploaded in the app and designs us a way to be very specific with each individual athlete. Some come in for lifestyle, some come in for maybe they're having some sort of issue or ailment, some come in with an injury and some come in with nutrition demands or metabolic demands. Um, but there's all of those things. This is going to be so different because the performance rehab side of it as well is not just bringing them back from injury. It's bringing them back to sport Mm -hmm. performance, not just person performance. And we've been talking about that a lot, but the recovery side of things, um, the structural neurological correction side of things and enhancing those things to make sure they're proper and there's uh, better coordination better balance, um, better, you know, strength, firing of the nervous system to each muscle, cell, organ, and tissue, uh, and then being able to take them next level, depending on what their goals are. Mm -hmm. Everything that we're doing here, as you see this pure athlete, uh, app roll out and what we're doing and the content you're about to see is based on each individual athlete. There might be some group things and some, you know, there's only one way to do Norma tech boots, like, but all of those things are available. But when it comes to literally, taking care of the athlete everything is very very specific based on a proper evaluation with technology and data so we can give them exactly what they need but also listening to them what their goals are these two people might need the same thing to get to this point right however these two people might have different goals in honoring that Mm -hmm. but also making sure that they know what health is where it comes from why this matters and why something like this needs to come about, especially in the hockey world. We had, you know, a high school coach. We've got some, you know, formal NHL players that are doing this that are already trainers. We're not here to replace. Mm -hmm. We're here to enhance and give better perspective, better data versus how some things are staying kind of stagnant. There's great trainers out there. But one of the ones we're about to talk to is like, wait, they can get all that information but are they going to want to do that in their place? No. Yeah. It's like we want to be the healthcare resource that provides the data to go here. Right. Whether it's blood work, whether it's technology data, whether it's structural neurological data, some of those things we can take care of in-house. But when it comes to the performance side, there's things that we can do here to teach them how to do things correctly. Mm-hmm. But then here, we make a relationship with your trainer open that book. It's in their app. The trainer can have access to the app as well. So they know it and, and how they can take their program based on what the information is in there. It's just so dynamic and so niched down to each individual athlete. I think this is exactly what a lot of people are looking for. Yeah. And if you are like a strength conditioning coach or a trainer or anything, just come do the evaluation. Yeah. I think it's just we had so a PT do it on Monday. Yeah. It's in, and they were still sweating. Everyone, yeah. I will make you sweat. <laughs> <laughs> But like that's the only way to really experience the how, value. Yeah, the value and how great this needs to be. It needs to be mandatory mm-hmm. for anyone, any athlete in the area. Um, just doing it mm-hmm. and experiencing it firsthand, so that you can take it and understand the value of it. Right, and the PT um, who's in the community at a golf facility um, that they've hired him, and or he's in a part of that facility he's on site there mm-hmm. and there was it, i know the owners over at that facility and they were like man i don't know how this is going to work because they think there's some headbutting yeah. here in, yeah. in the chiropractic and pt space or medical space and that's really what we're trying not we're not trying to avoid it we're trying to change the stereotype of that and you know i just walked in there one day and was talking to zach and um tyler happened to be there and put a lot of things at ease just again relationally knowing yeah who people are and do you vibe with them? And then he comes in and does this evaluation. He's like, man, he's like, all of this is good from the films we took to the data that he, he got after the technology. He's like, 
I can see exactly how I can use this. Mm -hmm. And that was very important for us to hear because he said, I can see exactly how I can use this. And so he's already thinking, can you get me more of this information on the athletes I send to you so I can do better for them? That's what we want. Yeah. There's our, our lane is our lane. And while it might be wide, some of those lanes overlap with what a lot of people are already doing. We are not trying to take anybody from anybody else. We have a capacity to do some of that, yes, but we do what we do very well. Structural neurological correction, metabolic correction, sports nutrition, and if other people are training with other people, keep doing that because chances are they're not doing structural neurological correction. They're not doing metabolic enhancement. They're not doing um, uh, like niche down sports performance, nutrition and meal mm-hmm. planning. They're not doing all of that. So let's all just collaborate and do that together. So when he said, I could see exactly how I can use this, we're starting to build the relationship to now get into that scene. And we've got a hockey performance guy that we're going to start to speak with too. And he's interested in learning more about what we do. So that's everything that we have been curating for the past, well, in my head, the past five, six, seven years to now what we've been doing here for the past you know, 12, 16 months and really starting to see it come together. Um, We've hard launched, so to speak, like we are ultra committed to seeing this go forward. And now we're going to hard launch again with a lot of content, a lot of resources, website, app, in every way, even remote to get a hold of us to at least, you know, have a conversation, ask your questions, do a severity screening. Mm-hmm. Um, how do we do this remote? How do we come in and bring our team on site? Can you come to us? We're, we have all of those availabilities now. Yeah. And now not only have we hard launched the brand, now we're hard launching the care that we provide. Yeah. So are we doing it right? Hell, I don't know, but we're doing it. Right. So we wanted to get the brand out there. The merch is coming. Um, we've and we've sold some of that here already. Ten percent of all of our merch goes to mental stu- or mental health care for student athletes. We keep that in its own little fund. If people need help with that, once we find an organization we trust, maybe we'll donate some, if not all of it, to that. Mm-hmm. But that's what the merch will be for. All of these resources are now on our website and through the app. So check that out. Um, so now we're hard launching the services and. A lot of good feedback and a lot of good take already. Yeah, and I mean, we've talked about the personalized care part, but even like the different ways that you can use the app are also personalized based on your needs. Like there isn't just a, you're either in the app or you're not. There's different ways if you want to dip your toe in and test it out. Um, and if you want to do the whole sh- whole shebang. Yeah. The, <laughs> like there is different, the way, is different ways to get into that as well. And combining being in office and using the app, like there are just so many different um, kind of combinations, mm-hmm. if you will, of using all of our new services and opportunities to better yourself. It's not just a this or nothing. Right. And, and we honor that because really it's, it's on our hearts and in our minds that we understand. And we've said this before on mm-hmm. a previous podcast where it's like, I understand a lot of people are like this and like, uh, what are they trying to sell me? Like, what, what are they going to kind of con me into? So we've created those, the, those steps in the ladder to be able to, yes, dip your toe in. Mm-hmm. Like, see what we have, see the aesthetic, see the content that's in there. And no, if you dip your toe in, you're not going to get the whole shebang right. or the whole ass, <laughs> as I call it. You're not going to get the whole ass set up. But uh, you're going to be able to be like, you know what? I see this. There's a library full of things. How can I make this more specific to me? Are these the right people to at least ask the questions? Don't decide that, I don't know if this is right for me. It at least gets you into the opportunity that you took action. Ask questions before you take the next step. Mm-hmm. We're okay with that because we don't want you to go in there and be like, oh, this isn't for me. That wasn't for me. And you put this bad review out there that had no basis because we didn't ask questions. Because we're here for anybody. We're not for everybody. But at least you can step your toe in and then you I just encourage everybody, even if it's with us, if it's at schools, if it's at the grocery store, I don't care. If you don't think it's for you and you're still skeptic, just ask more questions. Mm-hmm. Find somebody to get your questions answered. And then if you have a bad experience from there and it, it just goes all wrong, well, then it's a little more validated right. of how you feel. And if you feel like putting it out in public and destroying somebody's brand and content, that's up to you. But at least you have your questions answered. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. It's yeah. okay. But I think a lot of people are going to find where it's like, this, while it looks similar, is very different, and I see the steps that I can now take. They answered my questions because mm-hmm. I was willing to ask them, and you can move up as far as you want to go because, you know, yes, there are things that get 
more time intensive, more expense intensive, mm -hmm. but it's all a matter of what you, your student athlete wants, needs, and deserves for what your goals are and what you're willing to commit to. Um, and you can take it as far as you want. Yep. And you know, the, the biggest expense that anybody can occur is the expense of regret because these kids and these parents, you know, us as parents or myself as parent, you, I'm a pawent. <laughs> you're a pawent, but uh, me as parent, it's like the, the biggest expense is regret mm -hmm. because then you look back and be like, man, I wish I could have had more resources from them. They were standing right in front of you and we didn't ask better questions to get better answers. So, uh, while it might look smart, while, while some things are going to take time and money to do, and some other things are going to take more time and more money to do, don't confuse price with value. Our stuff is not way egregiously expensive. Mm -hmm. Egregiously. That was right off the that was top. That a good one. Uh, but the, the price of regret or wishing you'd have done it sooner or having something fall through that we could have found sooner. So just enter into the ladder wherever you would like in whatever you do, not just here, in whatever you do. Take yourself up the ladder. If you want to jump off the trampoline to the top rung, you can do that anywhere you go. Mm -hmm. Just decide and take action. Yeah, and I think there's just so many things within the app that can be personalized where – no one's profile looks the same yeah. and no one's plans are the same. And you can't get that anywhere right. you go. Um, it's always like a blanket. You have back pain. Here you go. Oh, you sprained your ankle. Here you go. Mm -hmm. And most I've of been writing my name with my foot yeah, for 18 for <laughs> weeks and <laughs> yes. I, I rolled it again last night. Right. And like you usually leave a facility or something with no way to contact anyone and say like, hey, I was doing my ankle alphabet at home and like it's just not challenging me anymore. Mm -hmm. And with the app, you can do that. And you, you don't have to even be in person for me to change that out for you and say, okay, try this. And you can have a conversation with us. There's mm -hmm. a two-way opportunity depending on where you come in and where yeah. you lead yourself to. We can do two-way communication directly from the app. Mm -hmm. And depending on where we're at in the day, depends on how fast we're going to get back to you. But just know we're going to get back to you. One of our clinical staff will get back to you for those kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. We can do video calls and mm -hmm. conferencing. You know what? Let's jump on a call. Let me see what you're doing. We're willing to do that. We want to give access like the pros. Mm -hmm. And that's literally in our mission and vision statement. I've been working on this for years. It's like, what qualifies? Like, you don't know how to write a mission statement? You don't know how to write. I do. I just don't know which one's which. And it's like, I just pour out what's on my heart. But one of the things that is, is athlete, cares like, athlete care like the pros. Let's build them better. Give you guys access to resources you can trust. Excellent healthcare resources that parents and student athletes can trust um, so that you can get all of your answers and not have to pay the tax or expense of regret. Yeah. Uh, so there's coaching calls that we can do for mentorship from personal coaching. And, um, you know, we've even got, if it needs to go the sports psychology route, we've got people that we can then load into there that are literally sports psychologists. So we can go from the, the mental coaching kind mm -hmm. of style, which we've been very good and blessed to be able to do, but we have more resources even in that, the, the nutritional coaching and specific meal planning that not every meal plan looks the same. Oh, you want to do the carnivore, more high protein, like you want to do the paleo, like, no, not everybody's boom. Okay. You want that? Here it is. No, here's your options. Boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. Stick to this. Here's your time frame. Here's how we're going to pivot. Here's what we're going to track. Here's what we pivot when we do need to based on this. Um, like you said, everybody's is different and it's all dynamically and specifically and uniquely in the app. Yeah. So if you missed our open house this past Saturday, we will be having more. Um, our goal, putting it out there, is to do one every quarter. Mm -hmm. um, so we will have another one before school starts. So if you miss this Saturday, yeah. look out for that date. Sweet. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week. See ya.